So, dispensations. And we just looked at references to the church in Revelation, the book of the Revelation, only occur before, before the seven-year tribulation period. People say, oh, no, the church is still there. No. Believers, yes. You got believers in the Old Testament at various times. That doesn't mean they're all the church. You have to look at the context. And then the context. And then look some more at the context. Now, references to Israel in the book of the Revelation declare the predominance of Israel during Daniel's 70th week. They corroborate one another so well. It's amazing, this book. People would just study it, Old and New Testament, find how well they corroborate one another. Some people would tell me, oh, the Old Testament, that's that's uh, that's none, uh, that's how people got saved by keeping the law. Wow! You didn't even read that well. What did Abraham do? There was no law around, see? Anyway, during Daniel's 70, word, 70 weeks, and magnify the absence of the church during that seven-year tribulation period. It magnifies it. Rules it out. Showers. Continues. Twenty-two verses in the, in the book of the Revelation refer to Israel. One of these verses refers to Israel as the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. It's not the church, right? Ten verses refer to the 144,000 Jewish men by several designations. We have them here. Ten verses describe Israel through various terms as the woman who was pursued by the dragon, Satan. You get the context there. It's not the church. One verse refers to the children of Israel. That's not the church. It's Israel. They haven't finished. God hasn't finished with them. That seven-year tribulation period, at the end of it, Christ will come again. Guess what all of that generation of Israel will do? To a man, woman, and child of cannibal age. Trust alone in Christ alone for salvation. Then the millennial kingdom will begin. God will institute a complete transformation over all Israelites of that generation when he comes again. They'll live hundreds and hundreds of years, a thousand years. They'll know the word of God perfectly and won't have to consult one another. And it'll be without sin. You can check that out. The old covenant study I did on that. Uh, the new covenant rather. The new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34 and elsewhere. Ezekiel 36 and other places. 36, 26 and around there. One of the 22 verses refers to Israel in Old Testament times. 2, 14. One of them refers to the nation of the future eternal state. 21 and 12, four verses refer to Israel during the time of the first coming of Christ. 12, 1, 2, 4, and 5. It is important to note that the remaining 16 verses refer to Israel on the earth during the 70th week. We have these references. This guy of old showers, really, really helpful teacher to me. Furthermore, the sacrificial system in the tribulation period, not the church. The sacrificial system in the tribulation temple will be on an ongoing practice at that point, pointing to a resumption of the rule of the law of Moses, right? We have Daniel 9.27 and all these others, 12, 11 to 13, Isaiah 66, 1 to 4, and so on. Point taken. Saints will be present on earth during Daniel's 70 week, 70th week, but they will not be church saints. Remember that. There are other saints set apart. Hagios. Abraham was set apart. Not all saints are church saints. Showers continues. Proper reading. The book of the Revelation clearly indicates that saints will be present on the earth during the 70th week. For example, Revelation teaches that the Antichrist will wage war against the saints, not the church. They're gone. They're in heaven. Guess who comes with Jesus Christ in his second coming from heaven? We do, the church. Daniel 7, 21 and 25 as well, during the 70th week, and that many saints of that period will be martyred. This teaching prompts the following question. 
Doesn't the fact that saints will be present on the earth during the 70th week require the conclusion that the church will be present on the earth during the 70th week? The answer to that question is, the fact that saints will be present on the earth during the 70th week does not require that conclusion because not all saints are church saints. This guy really likes, wants, wants to make it clear. That answer is based on two factors. First, the Bible clearly teaches that there were saints on the earth in Old Testament times. For example, Psalm 16.3 referred to the saints who were in the earth. And Psalm 116.15 declared that the death of God's saints is precious in his sights. 1 Samuel 2.9, 2, 9, 2 uh, Chronicles 6.41, Psalm 79.2, and Hosea 11.12. People, read your Bibles. Second, the church did not begin historically until the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, after the death and ascension of Christ. We did a study on this. Church beginning. It was a difficult one because there are it's not specifically stipulated this is when the church began. Since the church did not begin until that time, the saints who lived and died before the day of Pentecost did not belong to the church either. They were Old Testament saints, not church saints. Thus, during this transition period, there was an extensive period of history prior to the birth of the church when the saints were not church saints. Those that followed, John the Baptist, didn't become part of the church. They died. They were part of Old Testament saints. Context, context, context. The saints on earth during Daniel's 70th week are not church saints. So the fact that saints in the Old Testament were not church saints prompts several conclusions. First, not all saints in the Bible are church saints. Second, since the Bible refers to saints who are not church saints, the fact that saints will be present on the earth during the 70th week of Daniel does not require the conclusion that they will be church saints. They could be designated as 70th week or tribulation saints. And in the last seven years of the Mosaic Law period, they're part of the Jewish age. Why are they performing Jewish type sacrifices if they're not Jews? They're not, they're not church age saints. Third, since we are not required to conclude that the saints present on the earth during the 70th week are church saints, Therefore, we're not required to conclude that the church would be present on the earth during the 70th week. Finally, since the church is raptured before the tribulation begins. We have this study we did on the rapture. So the index R, a bunch of studies I did. So therefore, we can conclude that the saints on earth during the tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, amazing, Daniel, especially his prophecy, so many years ago, given to him by an angel. They're not church saints, but tribulation saints as part of the group of saints of the Mosaic Law period. Don't think Moses wasn't a saint? The great multitude of Revelation chapter 7 are not church saints. Introduction. Showers continue. He, he breaks it down. Chapter headings and everything. you got to get his book. I don't know if it's still in print. Between the sixth and seventh seals, John saw a great multitude of redeemed people from all nations and kindreds of, and peoples and tongues standing before the throne of God and before the Lamb in heaven. Revelation 7, 9 to 17. Here it is. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where do they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Tribulation, saints. Old Testament, Mosaic Law, period. 
finished intercalation of the church going back to heaven in the rapture. Therefore, they are all before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and who sit, who sits on the throne will spread his, his tent over them. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. They went through a lot. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Wow. It opens up my eyes to passages between Daniel and the book of the Revelation. Being clothed in white robes and holding palms does not demand a physical resurrection body and thus point to the raptured church saints. People just want to get what they want. They want the church to replace Israel. The problem with that is that makes God out to be a liar and inept and not able to finish off his promise of the new covenant to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. What do you think that is? What part of the church is the house of Israel and the house of Judah? Shower says, Two necessary questions. So, two necessary questions. Two questions must be asked concerning this great multitude. First, does the fact that they were clothed in white robes and held palms in their hands require the conclusion that they are resurrected with literal physical resurrection bodies? Luke 24, 36-43. Second, if they are resurrected, since the rapture of the church will involve the resurrection of church saints' bodies, is this great multitude, the church, having just been raptured from the earth between the sixth and seventh seals of the 70th week? If it is the church having just been raptured between sixth and seventh seals, it would mean that the church will be on the earth through the first six seals of the 70th week. The answer to the first question, the fact that these people were clothed white, with white robes and held palms in their hands does not require the conclusion that they are resurrected with literal physical resurrection bodies. There are several reasons for this answer. First, when Christ broke the fifth seal, John saw under the altar in heaven the souls of saints who had been slain for the word of God during the 70th week, Revelation 6, 9-11. Since they had been slain, they were without physical bodies. Hello? And yet they were given white robes to wear. Thus, in Revelation, the wearing of a white robe did not require a resurrection body. Even bodiless souls could wear such a robe. Answer. This guy's so good. Second, when the rich man of La Luke 16, the rich man of Lazarus, died, his body was buried, and his soul went to Hades. Even though his soul was without its body, Jesus ascribed eyes and a tongue to his bodiless soul. Third, Angels are spirit beings. As a result, by nature, they do not have physical bodies. Ephesians 6.12 Paul put angels in a different category from those beings who had flesh and blood bodies. In Luke 24.39, Jesus stated that a spirit does not have flesh and bones such as he had in his resurrected body. In spite of the fact that angels do not have physical bodies by nature, the Bible ascribes wings, faces, feet, and hands to them and portrays them wearing clothing. You got that? All about context. Fourth, God is a spirit. As a result, by nature, he does not have a physical body. In spite of the fact, that fact, the Bible ascribes to him a head and hair, eyes and a face, an arm, hands, feet, and a finger, and portrays him wearing clothing. All four of these reasons indicate the same truth. Although the Bible ascribes such things as hands, feet, faces, tongues, and the wearing of clothing the air, to human, angelic, and divine beings, it does not mean that those beings have literal physical bodies such as resurrected people have. Since this is true, the fact that the people of the great multitude of Revelation 7 were clothed in white robes and held palms in their hands does not require the conclusion that they are resurrected with literal physical resurrected bodies. He'd be a great lawyer, this guy. He just presents the fact. The answer to the second question. I wish I could talk to this guy. I talked to him a couple of times. He says, he went to uh, the church I went to, but before I got there. Such a smart guy. This answer is twofold. First, since we are not required to conclude that the people of the great multitude are resurrected people, 
We did not conclude that.